David Lynch is described in many ways. Weird, surreal, Jimmy Stewart from Mars, according to Mel Brooks. His convention-breaking, genre-bending films are even more difficult to define. His works are frequently called art films, which would come as no great surprise to those who knew him in his early life studying as a painter in the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston and Cooper Union for the Advancement of Science and Art. He was, and is, an artist, and his films reflect that. True, all filmmakers can be considered artists, but Lynch fits that mold of the fabled, struggling artist outside of the mainstream, concerned with greater meaning in his work more than financial viability. His movies reveal that part of his soul, challenging not only preconceptions about what a film can be, but also the audience to interpret what they see on the screen. A more gauche section of the film-going public might see his pictures say something like, the audience needs a flowchart to follow it, and dismiss it outright. And although this is lamentable, it is not entirely damnable because Lynch's films are complicated and are difficult to understand straight away. However, there are ways to prepare for viewing a David Lynch film. Tricks, if you will, to brace oneself for the mind-bending horror, double meanings, and frankly sometimes absurdist bric-a-brac that might come across as nonsense. It largely is not, and if one follows four simple notions, rules perhaps, one can avoid the headache and jump right into enjoying one of the strangest American directors since the advent of film. Before beginning, it should be noted that these four things are most relevant to Lynch's most unusual films. His adaptations of other source material are not as difficult to follow, and the rare Lynch film with a traditional coherent narrative, like Elephant Man, doesn't require greater analysis. Only the lynchiest of his films, Eraserhead, Lost Highway, Mulholland Drive, Inland Empire, that sort, will be relevant here. Let's begin. 1. Duality is an everyday part of life. For imaginative types like Lynch, one would merely assume that he saw the world differently, like there was a second world only known to himself, just beneath the surface. His films bring this to life, but mostly in an individual way, a manner that shows the duality of human nature through singular characters. It's more than good and evil, though, more like harsh reality and gorgeous fantasy. Spoilers to come. In Mulholland Drive, Naomi Watts plays two characters, or possibly one character, or possibly more. It is never explained. About halfway through the movie, everything suddenly shifts, and she is someone else living only a vaguely similar life. One interpretation of the film is that the first part is a dream. It would make sense because she is much happier and successful in the first part, and absolutely miserable in the second. Bleak and dark. Everything is wrong. Another interpretation is that she is the same character, and the audience is seeing alternate realities. In Lost Highway, Bill Pullman's character is arrested and jailed. One day in his cell, he either transforms or is replaced by a different man played by a different actor. He shifts back again towards the end of the film. So, what does all this mean? It's certainly up for debate, and people have been debating the meanings of these films for years, but regardless of the interpretation, it's important to brace oneself for the experience of watching a Lynch film with the understanding that not everyone is who they say they are, or even believe what they are. The owls are not what they seem. 2. The more unknowable the mystery, the more beautiful it is. This is actually a direct quote from Lynch himself. David Lynch is, in some ways, a mystery writer, although not in the Raymond Chandler or Agatha Christie mold. His stories are mysteries of interpretation. They all have an answer, maybe even more than one answer, but they are locked deep within the basement of the movie. He creates the door, but we have to turn the key. In fairness to Lynch, we do sometimes get clues. He gives them to us. In the insert for the DVD version of Mulholland Drive, he wrote a series of hints about how to watch his movie and how to discover what he meant. It's not a mystery for himself alone. He leaves clues for us, buried deep under the surface, and he's all too willing to motion towards them, but not outright tell us. It would be like a magician revealing his tricks. It is just not done. 3. Dream logic is real logic. As mentioned, David Lynch's films can be interpreted in part as dreams, but there is more to it than that. 
Dreams, real dreams, not just Lynch's movies, are sometimes said to be the subconscious trying to work itself out. Everyone in the dream is the dreamer, and everything in the dream means something. Nicolas Cage's hallucinations in Wild at Heart and Merrick's dream in The Elephant Man are literal, but movies like Eraserhead and Inland Empire actually feel like a character is dreaming all of it. Eraserhead feels like a nightmare, and Inland Empire feels like… well, that's hard to explain even in dream terms. The point is that these stories, like dreams, are somehow both not real, but still feel terribly important. Lynch once said, Waking dreams are the ones that are important, the ones that come when I'm quietly sitting in a chair, letting my mind wander. When you sleep, you don't control your dream. I like to dive into a dream world that I've made or discovered, a world I choose. Finally, four. Once is not enough. Some movies require multiple viewings, and this is not always a flaw. Not everything should be understood immediately, otherwise it risks beating the audience over the head with its meaning. There is such a thing as savoring a piece of art slowly and letting it swirl around a bit. Don't go into a David Lynch film with a notepad hoping to wrap your brain around the whole jigsaw puzzle and the whole meaning and the whole everything, because the first viewing should be more relaxed. Start putting together the bits and pieces the second time around. Maybe months later so it doesn't feel like you're watching something again, but rather watching something with new eyes. Watching Lynch's filmography is not as daunting as, say, watching every film Vittorio De Sica made, because the latter made over 30 films and Lynch, to date, has made 10. 10 feature-length films, that is. These days, he spends much of his time making short films, painting, and releasing music. He has not made a full-length feature film in seven years. He appears to have no plans on making another for the foreseeable future, and since he is now an old man, perhaps not ever again. The good news is that since his films practically require multiple viewings, one can watch Lynch's work over and over again and find something new each time. A final addendum to this rule. Don't worry if you throw your arms up in the air and yell that you don't get it, because it's not necessarily meant to be understood the first time around. In fact, the best thing that can be taken away from these rules is that even if one never understands a Lynch film, if these rules are off or not, then don't worry, because these films, even if not understood, can still be enjoyed. Owls are not what they seem.